What if I told you there was an economic crisis that was brewing right now that mathematically it just can't be stopped? Well, I think you should listen closely. My name is David Quintieri and I have been looking into this information for well over a decade, bringing videos to you each and every single day. I'm knee deep in the trenches so that you don't have to be. In this video, we're going to talk about the debt ceiling, the debt crisis, and of course, what's happening in the economy. There are thousands upon thousands of jobs that are going out the window now, and that isn't really showing up in the news. So I'm going to talk about this all. You came here for the truth. So let me unveil that for you. The first thing I need to look at is the Fed. Fed's Bostick says hard part is still ahead if inflation is stubborn. And so you could see people from the Federal Reserve beginning to argue back and forth. Is this really going to continue? We don't know. Is inflation there? Is it not? Fed officials revealed debate over whether to pause rate hike in June. And that comes at a time in which inflation is super high. High inflation erodes purchasing power that can lead to an increased cost of living and exacerbate financial struggles of individuals. If the Fed continues to increase their interest rates, it could make borrowing more expensive, as you know, with mortgages and credit cards, credit card debt. Right now, if you're carrying a balance, you're paying 20%. Okay, that can deter investments, potentially slowing economic growth. Well, if the Fed decides to pause rising rates, as they might do as early as now, that might have been it, it could potentially fuel inflation even further. We know that that isn't something that they want to be dealing with, or you and I. Who benefits from that? Who would actually stand to gain should inflation run hot? Well, of course, we know it's those in the richest of the rich category. They're going to benefit. It doesn't matter if their gasoline goes up from $100 to fill their tank to $150. It doesn't matter if their food bill goes up from $400 to $600. It's not going to impact them. Okay. But what will happen is that you'll see different assets start to materially go up nominally at the very least, and that benefits them in this way. So they're holding the assets. They're doing the right moves. They know the ins and outs, and they talk to the right people so that they can continue on with what they do at the expense of everybody else. They're just taking advantage of the situation. But in all in all here, we need to understand who's responsible. And that is those creating the inflation, those devaluing the currency. Always keep your eyes peeled on that. UK to crack down on landlords in private rental sector shakeup. New legislation will make it harder to evict unwanted tenants. UK renters and landlords are both under pressure from high rates. We've seen a lot of this in you know, recent years, 2020, you had the moratoriums, people couldn't or simply wouldn't pay their bills and the landlords couldn't kick them out. And then, because they knew there would be a major crisis for the landlords, they would just be you know, selling off their homes. They basically said, okay, we're gonna backstop the landlords as well. Now, all of that debt has been accumulated in different places. And so we're seeing the effects of this today, but the effects of that are compounded by what we saw during the financial crisis. They printed more money than ever before in history during that time. And then they decided to, you know, go for the gold medal, I guess, because they did even more in 2020. I'm sure you know the statistic. 40% of all the currency ever printed was printed in 2020. It's shocking. Okay. Well, in this particular report, you could see that the number of Britons are struggling to meet their financial obligations. It could actually be an indicator of economic issues that go well beyond what we're going to see right here and now. Rising costs of living, stagnant wages, increasing unemployment could be contributing factors. This could have a ripple effect on the economy. People cut back on their spending. It slows economic growth. And of course, you know the deal. And then that brings us to this one here, Connected UK Watchdog, warns millions more Britons face financial trouble due to inflation. And then we need to discuss what's going on with the debt ceiling. But first, 
I wanted to talk about this. Recently, a tech innovation contest ended up with the top 10 winners taking home a prize pool of $210,000. This competition took place in Hong Kong and the entrepreneurial teams from the top 10 hail from six countries, including the United States, the United Kingdom, China, and Sweden. They will now take off in Hong Kong, the capital of Asian entrepreneurship. One example of a very interesting finalist is VoltSafe. VoltSafe has developed the VoltSafe Smart Splitter, a compact and easy to use smart power outlet that improves the safety and convenience of powering home and office devices. It features advanced sensing and monitoring technology to detect and prevent dangerous electrical conditions, as well as energy monitoring capabilities and remote control via a smartphone app. Overall, the aim of the competition is to bring together like-minded entrepreneurs and open doors to business growth by inspiring creativity and supporting it in practical ways. Visit epic.hkstp.org today. Ah, that's right, the debt ceiling. What is the debt ceiling? I'm sure you're aware, but it's the limit of how much debt the federal government can have at once. $31.4 trillion today. And of course, this continues to get worse. Now, I want to cover a few things with that. U.S. is on track for June 1st default without a debt ceiling hike. you got to understand how serious that is. Imagine the United States not paying its bills. We're not talking about... The, you know, the guy down the street, you know, doesn't pay his bills and this, you know, notices and warrants on the guy's house. No, no, not, not that. We're talking about the United States government. And they're going to do it. They might have temporary measures that we, we've already highlighted previously. But the, imagine the potential of the inability of the U.S. to pay its bills without raising the debt limit. That would have significant, not just domestic, but global economic implications given that the U.S. is really central to the entire global economy, the biggest consumers, the most amount of spending on so many different things, commodities and production and everything. Well, a U.S. default could lead to a loss of investor confidence, potential downgrade to the U.S. credit rating immediately, by the way, and increased borrowing costs that slows economic growth. And we know that, that that could have a ripple effect, something like we have seen, you know, who knows, financial crisis. It could be worse. Now, I don't expect that. I really don't. I think that they're going to essentially be working very hard to, at the last second, come up with something. But just understand that that's what we are in the middle of right here and now. Just look, the U.S. debt servicing cost. The United States right now, I mean, I can't believe I'm reading this, is they're paying just to service their own debt because of interest rates. They are paying over $800 billion. $800 billion is an annualized number to just to service their own debt. This is absolutely absurd when you think about it. If this debt, you know, if you think about it in a sense, it's fictional, it's there, but it's, it's not there, and you're paying $800 billion on it? I mean, that's something that is just shocking, and look at the direction that it's been heading. It's just it's going straight up to such a degree. Now, you increase those interest rates, and you see that number keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you know they can't actually pay that. They're already in the debt, they've already got the deficits, and of course, this only presents itself with a further problem the longer they kick this down the road. You can't do that and not have consequences. At the same time, you could see that 14 million mortgages were refinanced during the 2020 timeframe. That makes life difficult for home buyers. Low interests during the 2020 timeframe led to a refinancing boom among homeowners, according to the Fed. And so you see it here, just looking at it hey that's great during that time imagine you were getting a low of 2.65 percent millions and millions of people were doing so and you see that what has happened in other cases in countries like canada for instance where you get this super low interest rate but anywhere between let's say three to five years 
you have to refinance. That's the way it works, not like in the US, okay? So you're essentially renegotiating or refinancing after that three to five year time frame. And then what's gonna happen to your mortgages? Well, of course, the costs are going to rise. That is not, absolutely not a good thing, okay? We have to look at this too. Layoffs are getting significant. You understand how all these dots connect. Do you get it? Do you see what's happening here? Here's one example. New Vodafone boss takes aim at costs with 11,000 global job cuts. What about this one? Google, Meta, and Amazon hire low-paid foreign workers after they laid off people. Uh-oh, that's not so good. The flattening at Meta is happening as a stream of longtime executives exit ahead of thousands more layoffs. They are all doing the same thing. They're laying people off in this one direction, and you will see it for yourself that they oftentimes will hire external or outside the country, um, lower paying them lower, paying them much lower. They're going to flatten, as they say here, getting rid of that middle management. And at the same time, they are implementing artificial intelligence or robotics any which way they can. Every conference, every boardroom, every meeting that's taking place right now, the discussion is how do we implement artificial intelligence to reduce our costs, to increase our productivity. And that means your job, potentially a lot of white collar, or this is a blue collar, but white collar jobs are the ones that are going to be on the chopping block right away. Robotics might take some time depending on the situation, uh, getting rid of, let's say, construction jobs and this and that. Those things are happening. They're trying to make it work. 3D printing homes, all that. It needs work, but they're doing it. They're trying to. At the same time, you look at the white collar positions where a lot of the tasks that are happening today with writing and you know anything, a lot of these AI programs are already better. They're already doing a better service. I remember paying a thousand, there goes my clicker, a thousand dollars for a service that now could be done much better than what could be done with, you know, these, I mean, I can't believe it. Pay, I'm, I gotta go back to them. I gotta get my money back, quite frankly, because the service wasn't so good. Anyway, that's what we see here today. I hope you appreciate the video. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. I really do want to thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.